So this is what your head unit will look like. This will be 2009 to 2012 Toyota Prado GX. So you just want to get your trim uh, removal tools. And I'll pop them in behind here and clip off the other, the other unit. Pop on both sides, I just use the tape so we don't uh, damage the dash. The aircon module is going to pull out and unplug it. So that's a six pin black plug. So that's for the aircon module. You just want to put your hands around the top here and just on oh, both sides, just give it a bit of like a wiggle and a pull. See that just like pops off like that. Unplug the hazard switch on this side here, which is just that switch there. And it's a unit out, and then we've got one, two, three, four screws to undo to take out this. Alright, and then you just half those are four screws are out. Give the head unit a pull, it's just gonna come out fairly easy. And you just want to pull the plugs out of the back. So we've I pulled all the plugs out to the back of the head unit, and it looks like the factory one. And you can see this is what we're left with. So the radio cable, your two, two main Toyota plugs. And an extra plug here that just has one speed wire, I think, connected. So this is probably used on other models as well to add uh, different like, options in the factory. So from the old plastic or fascia, the factory one, there's a three things that need to come off. These clips around the outside, which you can just pop both sides with a screwdriver and like flick them off. Uh, the hazard switch, which you just push the two like, sides in and that pops out the front. And then your like, air vents here, which you can see down here they have clips holding them on. So one, two, three, four, four on the bottom and I think they have three on the top. Maybe only two on the top. So you just need to put a like, screwdriver or uh, we'll something a uh, fin in these clips and like pop them out. So I normally find it's easier to work from one side and pop out a couple and then, like pull this as you do it. So you can see I've just jammed something under like, both these clips to pop them out. And then it was just a screwdriver on that top clip down there and then you just uh, like, push it from the front. And you can push out like one side. So you can see I've popped the other side now. So now I just like work my way down to the other side and I just need to pop that one there with a screwdriver and then like push the side from the front and that'll like pop out the air vents. You have it, the air vents popped out. Now you just want to grab like, the unit, grab the air vents, um, obviously make sure they're going in the right way. Which is with this bracket on the downside, they can only line up one way really. So then it's just um, <laughs> matter of line them up with two brackets on the top side and like the side brackets and the bottom brackets.
and just pushing them in, making sure the clips go on. have it the events in then the other thing that has to uh, go on your clip so these are pretty straightforward they just clip straight back on so clip goes all the way around onto everyone and then that's everything for that just apart from the hazard switch So in your kit here, you're going to have your main adapter harness. So you've got a 20 pin on the back here that's going to plug into the back of the head unit. And you've got, and you've got the car side plugs. <laughs> USB cable, so this gives you your two USBs. And your microphone input. Brown auxiliary cable, which we're not going to be using. Uh, this is your RCA pre-out cable. So if you're running like an aftermarket uh, amplifier, you would use this. If you just run the standard speakers, you will not. Third USB plug. So these USBs are handy for when we have uh, like future things like dash cams and other things you want to plug in. External microphone. Uh, GPS. So like in this model, you can just like mount this on top of the um, on top of the back of the head unit will give you good reception because there's no steel above it or you can run it somewhere else if you want to get it a little bit further out uh, the main point is to try and have no metal above it so give it a clear uh, view of the sky a reverse camera so this is for the GX model so just like a multi mount one so you can choose where to mount it gives you a few options the cable that the reverse uh, camera is going to plug into and this plugs into the back of the head unit extension cable uh, for the hazard switch oh, Wi-Fi antenna you can just leave this like, floating behind the unit it's just on an extension cable just in case you want to extend it up and run it to the top of the windscreen if you're running long distance like Wi-Fi stuff like cameras uh, like Wi-Fi cameras sorry now the OBD2 scan tool Trim removal tools. And and like the main head unit itself. And the button insert as this model is for a GXL or GX version, so this makes it a bit smaller. So this here on the car side you can actually see like all these plugs actually doing uh, like enough and the only one that is connected I think is this purple one here which will check but that might be speed wire. Um, so we do have a plug for this in the harness, you can plug it in, it's like not going to do anything if you do plug it in, um, it's up to you but you can plug it in or just leave it unplugged and tuck it away. Just as easy to leave it unplugged because then you can obviously like fold this up and tuck it out of the way somewhere. And that's how like simple it is. That's all your plugs done. Obviously you got your you still have your hazard switch plug and your and your aircon plug. Alright, so then you just want to grab the adapter uh, cable kit. Here's a couple we're gonna plug in first. The like a six pin and a ten pin plug. Now these are fairly straightforward, you can see them coming in here. Plug that into there, that into there. That's those two plugs plugged in. This we're not going to worry about because the antenna on this one is going to plug directly into the back of the head unit. You can see here there's two blue wires, so these are for to power like the amplifier. So if there's one on the antenna, so you just want to check like the back of the, of the plug, and you can see like one will have a wire coming out on the car side, and one won't. So on here it's one, two, 
the third one in does have a, a wire and the second one does not so we just want to change these swap these plugs around so we'll swap those blue our plugs around because we want to make sure the one that's like coming out of the back here which is the black one down the bottom has power and the second one in there's like no wire so on this model that's correct Now you'll see, this plug actually plugs into here. Now otherwise you are gonna <laughs> need to run. There's gonna be your two USBs in your mic. So you can like pop these out wherever you want. Uh, we will in the future include like a rocker panel switch for these USBs. So if your kit has one, you've got one of the newer kits, it does. And for that you'll just be able to put like, the USB plug into one of your room rocker switches and we'll hopefully have an extension for this that'll go in there and a quick charge so you'll get two USB ports but for now you're just going to run these and probably like pop them out down by the kick panel or wherever you want to pop them out so that they're handy so we'll tuck these down here because we're going to I pop them out by the kick panel down the bottom there and on the other end of this we have like a mic plug so we will run our like mic now though now we're just going to pop like the pillar off because we're doing a run our like microphone up and we're probably going to stick it up in the corner here or maybe run a bit, a bit like further and we're actually going to do a dash cam at the same time so you just need to like pop the like flaps off your handle here and there'll be two screws under here and here. I'll take the handle off and then put the trim tool into the side of this bit and we'll pop that off. So, uh, actually, the one's 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 the So you can see we've popped this off a bit. Um, it's up to you if you want to pop out the bottom, but it does get into the duck, duck dash quite top, tight. So we do have enough room here now already. So what we've also done, just use your uh, trim tool and like pop in here, and you can pop the side bit off. And then after that, you can get your trim tool in and like pop this like start button area off, and then you can pull out uh, the aircon that was in there. Now all that's going to do is just give us like enough room to like run a cable across the dash, up uh, behind there, and then up the A pillar, which is basically what we want to do. So we pop the like a microphone out here, as you can like see now. So. We've right, we've run it like a, a down here across to get across like this part here. You can just use like a coat hanger or a long piece of steel, and just obviously tape this to the end and like poke it through, and then collect it with your hand. Comes under the steering wheel, comes through behind here, into this into like side trim here, and then up into here, and then up into like this bit. Now the microphone will be like popping up the top here. So that's where we're like running the microphone on this one. Here's our plugs for our um, our dash cam. So since you have all this off, it is a good time. You might as well run the dash cam at the same time. So like this here is going to go to the dash cam end. And like this here is going to go to the head unit end. So again, we're just going to pretty much like run it in, the, in like the same spot as the microphone. But obviously we're just going to uh, run it across the top up here. And I tuck it into the roof liner. So the dash cam will have it popping out over here. It is good as you can see these have like this little, have the side impact like airbag in here. You can see there's a, a cable harness uh, clip already. So if you just run this cable, uh, just if you just run the cables down uh, next to that uh, existing cable in, in the same cable harness. So they'll just ensure they're out of the way of anything that they shouldn't be in the way of. So here you can see we're going to obviously Obviously, I tuck it through here, this other cable. 
So as you can see, see we have our two our two cables running down that same uh, cable tray. Uh, Toyota has very kindly put those in, and and at the top of these are actually like open. So you, so you just all you need to do is push your cables into the position, and they'll stay in there and be all tidy and out of the way. Again, a USB for the, for um, like the dash cams through now, exact same place through there underneath the steering wheel. And it pops in, you can see the two wires here for like the <laughs> mic and USB out the side here, up the inside of here, into here, and hanging out the top here. And we'll we'll tuck this up into like the like the top of the trim when we put the dash cam in. Okay, so now I just want to do a quick check and then actually grab the unit and just plug it in and just check that we have sound and power coming through. So, and, the, and, and like the radio, so you want to plug the radio plug in. So you're basically going to plug in a plug into here, 20 pin plug, and the radio plug. And all we want to check is that the unit turns on. And we have like radio and sound. Turn the cutter AC on. Always good just to do this check first up, make sure everything's all good. Um, before we do put it back into, we will, uh, we will check because on this one we're doing a dash cam. We'll check the dash cam's working, and we'll just check the reverse camera's working. So, so uh, those are the checks you normally do before you put the unit in. Just save you from the pullback, yeah, just in case something's not working. Um, so into radio. You can see we have like radio and sound coming through the speakers. No steering wheel controls on the GX, so I need to check that. And we haven't put the um and we haven't put the a reverse camera or dash cam in yet, but that's a good check to start with, so we've got power and sound and radio reception so just a reverse camera here we just had it sitting out the back here by the um uh tow ball so it looks pretty good there just under the it's actually into some existing uh, bolts and stuff we've come into the trailer plug so we've got our our reverse light power from the trailer so we've i'll splice into that we'll tape that back up we've just so that's on these ones here. So we've got the power, the red one, into the, to the trailer plug reverse one, which was black on a on a seven pin on a seven pin uh, round trailer plug. So let's check the trailer plug you have and what the reverse light uh, one is. If you are going to the trailer plug, if not, you got to go in for the tail lights, which is fine as well. Then the other end here, we just got our RCA hooked in, and the black sorry here is obviously to earth. And then we've just run this along the top of our chassis rail at the top here so we'll put it up the top so it's out of the way so you could either do that or you could obviously like pop it up one of these grommets and into the um into the back of the car then run it through the interior so the reverse camera on like this one we've just ended up on mounting just below the trailer plug here um it gives you a good view of the tow bars for when you hook up a trailer and you can also see well behind you so the reverse camera what it actually needs is you've got a positive and negative feed that plug into a DC plug so these need to go to the positive feed from the reverse wire so we've actually um, just hooked into the trailer plug here so in like this case it was the black one was reverse lights so depending on what sort of trailer plug you have you can check uh, like what it is and you can actually like run into that wire to get your reverse lights because it's quite handy and then the other one just needs to go to earth which is the black on the DC power point and then the other cable is just the RCA cable, which you can either run uh, directly uh, like along the bottom of the car. We've just uh, like run it on top of the chassis rail on this one, and then popped it up through the bonnet, uh, through like a grommet, and then uh, back behind the head unit. Or you can like pop it up the back and like run it uh, through the inside trim. It's up to you. But the end result is you'll get your uh, yellow RCA cable and your green trigger cable up behind the head unit here. So this green trigger cable just needs to be connected to the orange and black uh, cable that says reverse in on our head unit main harness. So that's going to trigger it to go into reverse. 
and then the yellow one here just goes into the grey six pin uh, reverse in plug which is this one here which plugs in the back of the unit, head unit and you want to use the purple cable here that says cam in and now once you've done the reverse camera obviously check that it's all working and everything before you put everything back in or hook it up together so here we're just going to check our reverse camera work so we've got our main black harness in here we've got the grey six pin our reverse camera harness in which goes purple cable into the RCA that you like running from the reverse camera and then the green cable has been hooked to our reverse in one which we've done here now if you want to power up the unit and put it in reverse so units are like powering up here if you want to put it in reverse just make sure your connections are solid um, reverse camera is working before you go to the next step Yeah, all right, so we're gonna go into reverse. And you can see we've gone boom, straight to reverse. And we have our camera showing here. And as you can see on this side here, we've got a pretty good view of the tow ball. So we can like adjust it a little bit if you wanna get a better view or whatnot. So when you are installing the, in, <coughs> the dash cam, you just need to plug into the grey pin here that uh, goes to the two USB plugs and we're going to plug the dash cam one into our USB plug here so handy to do if you're uh, doing as you're doing the stall otherwise you might have to uh, take your head unit out or if you did run these externally you could just plug the dash cam in uh, to wherever it was so we shouldn't plug these two together and then like, set the dash cam up and make sure it's all working before we go and like stick it on the windscreen and finish the cabling off So just power on the card ACC so the head unit powers up here and we'll grab our dash cam our cable here we've already plugged the other end into the USB port so now I'm just going to plug these two together plug the two wires together we've like obviously like run one up the top here which we're gonna like run along the roof trim so we'll plug those together give them a good click in you better see the LED light come on here top of the head unit and you will get like a USB sign up the top here So what we want to do now is we just want to go into apps, APK installer, and you're going to be picking up a USB 1. Click on that, and there's going to be like a UCAR DVR down the bottom. You just want to install this. So just give it access to all of that. That's just installing uh, the app for this like, dash camera on the head unit here. Also, well, make sure you put uh, the SD card that comes with our units in it, come with a Pioneer high speed SD card. Just slide that into the top of the unit here and here. Push it in. Be careful when you do that because if you push it in now, it obviously flicks quite far away. So, you just want to push it in. Then the SD card's just in, in there now, just use a little screwdriver to help push it in because it's quite hard to get it with your fingers in there. And so you can see now the app's installed and we've plugged it in. I'm just like obviously making sure we're working like footage. 
So that's all we want to test here. Now obviously it's handy to have the screen also going when you mount it so you can get it in this and that's what you want so you can turn this obviously to get the position you need. So you can obviously put it in the place where like, you think you're going to put it up on the windscreen here and like, watch the screen at the same time to, to get it where you want it to, to be. Then once you're happy with the spot, you just want to like, peel off the 3M high temp stick, the red one here, and like, stick it on. So we're going to stick it on up right next to the uh, rear vision mirror. So you obviously just, so, so like the actual like unit once it's, uh, like, has been like stuck on, actually can come off. So it, it doesn't really matter where you can put it because you can get to the actual like, unit, you're just going to push the unit up. So just like make sure you can push the unit up still when you mount it. So don't mount it directly on top of the hood, on top of the hood line, otherwise you won't be able to push it up and get it off. So I want you with the spot. You just stick it on. Give the windscreen a, a clean first. We're going to stick it, and then just press down for 30 seconds or so. And then what we will actually do is see. I just I just push it up to take it off, and we'll give the unit we'll give the stick pad a few good pushes just without the actual unit on. So you can see it's just up there. It's a bit of a hot day today. It's not normally best to stick it when it's cold on the windscreen, but it's the free and VHB stuff, so it's pretty good. Next thing to do is just take your cable, obviously, and tuck it into your hood lining. So this is all fairly easy to do. There's obviously one piece that's a bit uh, like fatter where the plug is. And just tuck it the other way, up there. Like that. So you can see it's all pretty tidy, tucked in there. Runs along the top here, just push it in with your hand. And then it's going to uh, like go down the side trim as we spoke about before. So that's your uh, dash camera on and recording here. And as you can see, that's the app that it records on. You can obviously set up, set up in small mode up here, and these other things we'll go through later on. So you can see, all done there, all fairly tired, tidy got our, our mic up there and our dash cam installed. So we're just sitting the unit on the white uh, foam box, 
that it uh, like came with. I'm just going to finish all off all the cables now. So we've got one USB here plugged into our dash cam. So that's all good. There's a little bit of excess here. So we will like, tape that up uh, to tidy it up a bit. Got a reverse camera hooked in. Now we did run our mic wire. Here that is here. So we'll grab our microphone. We'll plug that in. I'm gonna give that a good push so it clicks. So that's in. Then the only other wires we haven't run yet is we have a third USB which we will plug in and just leave hanging out the back. It's just there for future add-ons. So we don't quite need that uh, yet. We've like a Wi-Fi antenna. So this screws onto the one on the far side, like right hand side of the head unit. It says, as you look at the back of it, it says like Wi-Fi above it. Just screws into here. And the other USB I just plugged into here, you see the purple plug. Screw that on. Make sure you screw the Wi Fi up tight. I'll try and get the camera in a better spot. It's a bit better spot there, you can see what's going on. We have the GPS which screws onto this side. Make sure that's tight. Now this GPS, you can, there's a good angle on the head unit here, so if we put it here, there isn't gonna be any steel above it. Um, now the main thing you're looking for is, so it can have a clear view of the sky without some steel above it. Um, so you just put it on the back here, not over the vent holes, but just in front of them. Give it a good push down. And now stick that on. So that's basically everything hooked up now. We've uh, used our harness, we've got our like, extra USB which is going to float at the back here because we're not going to uh, like, use that yet. Um, we have our GPS on top with our like, Wi Fi. This also we're not going to need to like run up and extend, so it's only for like, future use, so we just like future proof the unit. Um, so for this one, we can also like, leave it hanging on the back. We've adjusted that blue wire to the one that had the plug. We've done our reverse camera and we've done our dash cam. So the only other thing we have is we have our extra USB here, which in the future kit we will, I will install a panel switch for it, so that'll be handy to have. But for now I'm gonna pop that out down the side here on the passenger side. Um, and pop it out by the kick panel down there. So that's all the plugs you need for the head unit. Um, and the only other thing we have to do now is just extend our hazard switch here. So what we supply for this is fairly basic, it's just a little extension cable. Um, so you just need to plug these all in. Just remember what side goes to like, like what because you'll have to just like match them at the other end. So all it's doing is extending this has its switch uh, cable a bit. So we mm, know it goes brown, red, orange, yellow. So we'll have a look at that on the far side. Uh, and just put a little bit of tape around that, even though they do actually hold in there quite well. We'll put a little bit of tape around it just to make sure it's all secure. That extends it, has its switch out. So again, for the hazard switch, like obviously it would have plugged in this this way up so we just copy how it would have plugged in so yellow on the far side and just plug this into the plugs so it goes yellow orange red brown we will try and get an exact plug match up for this 
done soon um, but for now this is what we have so it works fine Plugging it in because I just want to make sure that it's all working before we go and put everything together. Well, everything's all good now. Now, all I do is I just go through and I just um, what you can do is just tape up any little any cable here. Obviously, got plenty of spare just to tidy it up. Now, you don't you don't have to do these up too tight because sometimes that can restrict your movement a bit and you got to put the head unit back in but if you tighten up for like a little bit it just helps it go back in a bit tidier so double check get everything plugged in i was had didn't have, have the um radio plug in there so now that's plugged in Everything's looking pretty good. So the unit's all good to slide back in. Get rid of that handy white box. It's just nice if something that rested on when you're working on it. Tuck all the cables up. You want to make sure you want to make sure you run your hazard cables out the side through your little hole in the front here. You have those handy. Obviously, make sure you have your air, air con plug still free. these cables you just want to tuck in behind the unit as you put it in just making sure <laughs> none of them are sitting behind where the plastic clips need to clip into now let's clip the top of the unit in first a little bit make sure the plugs are there at least it's not too much of a problem but again we've just lost our hazard ones so make sure you print the hazard ones through and just give the unit a few push pushes on the outside and the back now you notice we didn't put the steel brackets back in which was uh, four bolts because this unit is singled in lighter you don't need to put those in so you don't have to worry about those anymore so again just give it a few pushes make sure it's all good the cables are tucked out of the way. Like I said before, plenty of room in there, so that's fine. Slide the aircon back in. You're just looking for your four pin plug here. I think I'll just push it away. Plug this back in. And just clip this in. pushes and there you go it's all lined up feed your head unit in looking pretty good now again before you get uh, too excited always good just to power the unit up peel off the protective screen you can see i got some that was just a silicon from a connector on there um obviously just do your basic checks that we did before search for a radio station Do they have those? Make sure you get in those. Cool. Reverse. Awesome. 
those are the main two things you wanted to check and then obviously we put in the dash cam so make sure that's coming up so that's everything checked and everything working fine so now the final thing to do is just the hazard switch here 